Hello, something a little bit different today. I'm doing some sewing. Um, I'm making some little bags with these uh, ready-made sew-in purse frames and I'm using recycled fabrics and um, they all came from different charity shops and um, there's, uh, there's a reason for doing this and this is because I'm part of a group which uh, is called Rag and Roll and it recycles uh, old fabrics into cool stuff. So um, we've been working on these together and I thought I'd make a little tutorial just to show how I did them, partly so that, uh, so that you can all um, explore it, but uh, also so that um, other people in the group can, uh, can watch the video and find out how to make them. So we've, we're all on the same page and we're all making the same thing. You can see here that I'm, I'm starting out by making a template to pattern for it started by drawing around the handle and then uh, and then adding a little bit of extra fullness at the sides um, so that it kind of it makes it a little bit kind of puffy at the sides and then drawing the rest of the bag in and it's just the rest of the bag is just going to be a rectangle uh, but I'm going to add a little bit of space at the bottom um, so that I can make kind of a flat bottom on the bag um, so that um, so yeah, it gives it a little bit more room inside, and uh, and gives it a kind of a nice a nice shape. So all I'm doing here is that I'm marking on the seam allowance. I'm using a, a centimeter and a half seam allowance. Uh, so I'm just marking that all the way around, and I'm going to draw it in, and I can cut the pattern out. So the the pattern that you see here. Um, is going to be for the lining and I'm doing some interlining as well so um, I'll use this pattern to cut that out but I want the outside of the bag to have a bit of extra fullness so for the outer material I'm going to alter the pattern a little bit and um, put in a, a pleat at the top and then, um, and then the same amount of extra fabric at the bottom which we'll bring in by gathering the, um, the seam at the bottom so to get the extra material I need to, to put that pleat in, I'm just cutting this pattern piece and then drawing around it and then adding in four centimetres, which will give me a two centimetre pleat. And then there'll be the extra fabric on the bottom as well that, uh, that yes, will we'll gather in and that'll give it a nice, uh, a nice full um, feeling and the the fabric will lie in folds and it'll it'll be quite pretty because it's quite it's quite floaty fabric. It's uh, it's from an old scarf. Um, it's not silk, um, but silk would work really well with this. But uh, anything that um, that flows quite nicely would would work for this. Of course, you can make this this kind of bag out of cotton as well. And if if you're a beginner, then I'd recommend starting with something like that. Uh, because the slippy fabrics can be a little bit difficult to sew. So this is the fabric I'm using and uh, and I'm cutting out two of uh, the outside um, pattern. Um, I'm using a rotary cutter on a mat but if you wanted to use a pair of scissors and uh, mark it out with some tailor's chalk or something like that then that's absolutely fine. Um, so yeah, so I cut two of those and then this is uh, just of cotton that I'm using for the interlining. So anything with a little bit of structure, a little bit of body to it is absolutely fine. And uh, uh, yep, yeah, cut two of them. And I'm going to be adding some uh, fusible interfacing onto this as well. And that just again, it gives it a little bit more body, it allows the bag to stand up on its own really. So the, the fabric for the outside and for the inside, for the lining, is, is quite soft and flowy. Um, and this uh, so yeah, this is the lining, and this is a silk georgette, and yeah, it was it was a little bolt of of leftover fabric that somebody donated, and uh, and yeah, it's beautiful fabric, and little scraps of it are all you need for something like this, so it works really well. But yes, um, but you could use anything you like for the lining. I just this is just what I happen to have. And this is the interfacing, and I'm cutting out roughly. I'm not being too concerned about it being um, 
it being exactly right. In fact, if there's um, if there's less of the interfacing in the seams, then it'll help them be a little bit bit less bulky. You kind of do want them to be sewn into the seams, though. Even though it's a, a fusible interfacing, it, it it just helps it stay if it's if it's sewn into the seams. But uh, it doesn't need to go right up to the edge of the template. When you iron it on, the thing to be really careful of is to iron the right side. There's a rough side that's got the glue on it, and that needs to go next to the fabric. And just go over it with a um, a hot iron until the glue's all melted. And again with the other one. So now I'm going to um, take those pleats in. So just at the at the bottom, I'm going to mark a beginning and end point for where I want my gathering to go, and I'm just measuring a few centimeters in from the edge, so that the gathers don't go into the into the hem. And I'm making those pleats, the the two centimeter pleats, and you can see on the on the template the flat bit is is where I'm pleating. You can see where the where the edges are. So you just bring them together and uh, and pin it, and I'll do that on both pieces. and then over to the machine. And I'm going to run a line of stitching along the bottom. Make sure it's inside that centimetre and a half seam allowance. So around about a centimetre is fine. And normally when you sew a seam you kind of go backwards and forwards with the machine at the beginning and the end of the seam. But I'm making sure I don't do that with the, the thread that I want to, the bit I want to gather, because you'll need to be able to pull the threads. And then at the same at the top, I'm just putting a few stitches in that just holds that pleat in place. And again, make sure that the stitches you put in will be inside the seam. So if the seam is going to be a centimetre and a half, then I've, I've made them about a centimetre and they'll all be hidden. You won't see them on the finished piece. And then I'm just pulling the threads at the bottom and allowing the fabric to gather. Try and make sure it's even all the way along the bottom. And uh, and you'll know when you've pulled it in enough because you can measure it up with the template for the lining and uh, and make sure it's the same length as the as the lining when you've pulled in all the gathers. So I'm pinning now um, along the sides and the bottom. Um, I've put the two outside pieces right side together. Uh, it's important to put the right sides together, and um, and then I'm pinning all the way along the bottom. Um, on this one I'm being especially careful to put pins every every inch or so just to make sure that those gathers are kind of straight and um, they won't get caught up in the machine. Um, and uh, that one's ready. And then I'm going to do exactly the same with the lining and with the interlining. So I'm just going to pin um, the sides and the bottom ready to sew along there. And again with the lining. Now the lining, I'm also going to put a couple of extra pins in along the bottom. And they're really just markers because I don't want to sew the bottom of the lining. I need to leave a gap of about um, yeah, about about three to four inches, something like that, along the bottom. Um, and that's going to be important later because we'll be turning the bag inside out through that hole. So I'm starting at the top about a centimetre and a half down from... Uh, and a centimetre and a half in from the side. And I'm going to sew down the side, reinforcing the beginning and the end of each seam. Get to a corner and turn, and in as far as the pin. And then reinforce that by sewing backwards and forwards a couple of times. So that's one side. And then the other, this is the lining I'm doing it on. Um, reinforce by going backwards and forwards. Go to the corner and turn, and then sew until about a centimetre and a half before you hit the end. Don't, don't sew right to the end. You need a little bit of a gap there. And then I'm going to um, sew the interlining in the same way, again starting a centimetre and a half down. And this time I'm just going to sew all the way around the side, the bottom, and then back up the other side.
And now the, the main fabric, and again I'm just going to sew down the side, along the bottom, and back up the other side. I don't need to leave any gaps in this one. The thing to be careful about here is not to include any of the stitching that we put in for the gathering um, in the in the body part of the bag, so it should all be on the right hand side of the seam that you're sewing. So it, it ends up in the seam, so you don't see it. If you do kind of um, yeah, if you do include some of those stitches in, you might be able to um, you might be able to sew another line a little bit closer, um, and uh, and and cover them up. But yeah, that looks right. So I'm going to trim the seams. Um, this just uh, takes some of the bulky fabric out of the seams. And uh, that will give you, your bag a, a kind of a nicer uh, finish at the end. And I'm going to box the corners. So I was talking earlier about the, the bottom of the bag kind of having a flat look. And this is how you do it. So the I don't want a pointy corner. So I open it out a bit. And I, make sure, I rub it until the seams are together and put a pin in it. And then I sew across the corner. Now I can I do this by eye because I, I, can, I can do it. I've done it lots of times, but if you're worried about it, you can make a little triangle template and mark it so you know exactly where you're sewing. And I'm just going to open it out again here so you can see what it looks like. I'm happy with it, so I can trim that seam as well. And I'm just going to do the other corner. So yeah, so matching up the seams and pin and then sew straight across that corner. Okay, that's the outside of the bag done. And I'm going to turn the seams to the inside and move on to the other pieces. Yeah, so the interlining outside I'm doing exactly the same thing, and with the lining as well. I'm just going to box the corners of all of them. So yeah, so just go through exactly the same process that you did on the outside of the bag. And turn that one the right way around as well. And then the lining, yes, we are doing exactly the same thing. And then, yeah, then you want to leave the lining with the seams on the outside. So what I'm going to do now is take the outside, put the interlining inside it, both with the right sides facing out, so the way that you'd expect them to be, the way that you want the finish to be. And then I take the lining and with the seams out, so with the right side on the inside, I put that over the whole thing. I know the lining is going to go on the inside eventually, but we're going to sew it now with the lining, the outer fabric, and then the interlining. And we're going to sew all the way around the top. So what I'm doing here, you can't really see it very well in the video, is that I'm lining up the side seams and I'm pinning each side of the side seam. So all three pieces of fabric pinning together quite close to that seam on the side. And then uh, pin the other side, match up the side seams on both sides. And then uh, from the middle of the bag, uh, from, from the top, pin the three parts together and then go out from there. If, you'll find if you start pinning from one side and work towards the other that you'll, you, you may end up with too much fabric of, of one of the others. Pinning from the middle and then outwards keeps it more even. So you, um, you can end up, if you pin from one end to the other, you can end up with, uh, with kind of um, too much fabric at the at the far end 
and then uh, and then it's, it's really difficult to sew. So yeah, so now I've pinned all around, and I'm going to start sewing through all the layers. I've taken the uh, the the case off my machine um, that's got my sewing um, bobbins and things in, um, just because it gives me a little bit more space to move uh, this around the arm of the sewing machine. And I'm sewing, um, I'm actually sewing a lot slower than you see on the video, and taking it really carefully and making sure that the fabric that goes underneath the arm, the the foot of the sewing machine, is uh, is flat and um, there's no creases in it, and uh, and that all three layers are, are together as close as I can get them, and trying to keep the seam allowance uh, to one and a half centimeters all the way around. So now I'm finished and I am clipping the seam as well uh, to about to about half a centimetre and uh, there are some curves in this seam and so when we turn it it's going to be really hard to turn unless we've made a little bit of room in that seam so I'm clipping them and um, using a pair of really sharp scissors but not going um, through the line of stitches and I'm just clipping the curved bits so the curved bits at the top and the bits around the side seams and then that hole that we left at the bottom in the lining um, turn it whole bag through that hole and this is pretty much it I'm gonna get an iron onto that seam and you might want to do that before finishing it off just to make sure you've put enough clips in it uh, if not you can take it out and um, clip the seams a little bit more uh, but now I'm um, pinning closed that little bit of fabric that I left open at the bottom of the lining and just putting a line of stitches in very very close um, through both layers of fabric very very close to that seam that's going to be uh, right at the bottom of the bag you're not really going to see it but it's it's still nice to do it neatly and you can hand sew it if you if you want a really neat invisible finish so now I've, I've pressed those seams and I'm ready to insert them into the frame. The frame's got a little groove all the way through it and you simply, um, starting from the middle again, um, push your, um, your, your fabric into the seam of the purse. And all I'm doing here is roughly tacking it on. I'm not actually going through the holes in the sewing purse frame. I'm just going around the frame with some... Um, yeah, with some cheap cotton and uh, and just getting it to a point where it's as I want it and now I've got some uh, red embroidery thread and I'm going to do the stitching through the frame so I'm making the stitches on the outside of the frame um, big ones that go from one hole to the next and then just making a tiny little uh, stitch on the inside and go back through the same hole that I, I, I sewed through so here we are, um, we're nearly done, so all there is left to do is kind of tidy it up a little bit, snip any loose threads, and I'm taking off the tacking thread that I used here, just just cutting it, being careful not to cut through any of the fabric, and um, and removing any, any random stray bits. So there you go, and I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you very much for watching.